Well, uh, it's been a week since I'm using the new Poco X3. This is a beast in terms of specs in this range. This is having a 6000 mAh battery, Snapdragon 732, and uh, this version, this particular version is 6 GB and 128 gigs of storage. And this is powered by a quad camera setup here of 64 megapixel. Today, let's talk about this. My name is Lijo and welcome to Tech and Tour. As you unbox the phone, you get the phone, a case, a 33 watt charging brick and a C-type cable. And there is a SIM injector and some documents. First, this case. This feels good. It could offer adequate production. You may not buy another one. Once you pick up the phone, the first thing you're gonna notice is the weight. This is almost a quarter kilo weight. That's heavy. You'd especially feel it if you're texting like this, holding your phone in one hand and texting like this, you would feel that weight if you do it for some time. If you see in reviews that this is this heavy build is an okay thing, don't trust that. You might probably not like it. I don't like it. Next thing, they have a huge logo, a Poco logo here, which is straightforward ugly. They could have done with something a little smaller, something a little more subtle. Now the weight can be attributed to the huge battery of 6000 milliamp. The global version of this phone doesn't have 6000. It is having NFC. Here we lose NFC, instead we get a bigger battery. Now that could help with the increased refresh rate in this phone. This is having a 120Hz refresh rate, a um, super smooth display. The 120Hz refresh rate takes a lot of juice from this battery. And there, the 6000 mAh battery just copes it with well. So I've been using it for some time. With this 120Hz refresh rate, I'm getting just about one day of battery uh, phone usage. And I don't play games. This is just two refresh rate settings, a fixed 60 and a fixed 120. I made to try this with the 60 hertz refresh rate, so that should help with the battery. That may be in an update video. Also, if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing to the channel. So the 60 and 120 refresh rates are fixed. You won't be able to put anything between that. Example, you cannot use a 90 hertz refresh rate in this. The new Mi 10 iPhone has a varying refresh rate. Something like that, a variable refresh rate according to the content you are consuming would have given you a much better battery backup in this phone. But sadly, this is not it. Next, the fingerprint sensor. It comes on the power button integrated. This is something I don't like. The earlier phones used to have a fingerprint sensor here, which was easier to use even if you use it with your left hand or your right hand, so you just put it right here or right here. Now, this has to be activated like this, which is not really convenient if you're using this phone, this hand. Also, another option would have been the in-display in fingerprint scanners, and considering the cost of them, maybe they didn't go with this, but I'm not liking this fingerprint scanner. Another way to get into this phone is the face lock, which seems somewhat buggy. For this face unlock feature to work as expected, as you pick up the phone, you need to enable the raise to wake feature in this phone, which is also battery consuming. Let me try this. It took a second to open. This is not iPhone fast, but it works pretty good. And sometimes it doesn't. I don't know, I have to work with my eyes to get this working like this. But other than that, I, overall I feel the face unlock thing is a bit buggy. And also one thing I've noticed since these days we are wearing masks and I have seen this getting unlocked even when I'm wearing masks. That would be something weird. I'm not sure if that's just me. So let me know in the comments. Now this is a 33 watt fast charger which does its job pretty well. This is this 6K battery. You just plug this in and turn on the charger. And there you go. What a pleasant thing to go those numbers up. I'm not fast forwarding this. I put this in charge for around 20 minutes just to see. And that gave me around 25% of power. So it took 
a total of 80 minutes to completely charge or maybe 75 80 and that gives you 100 percent of charge which is fast considering the battery this huge battery and most importantly this is coming in the box not so environment friendly and there was a trend with redmi phones i was using a redmi 8 myself earlier and that used to have support for fast charging at 18 watts but the charger brick along with that was for 10 watts i suppose which is not really helpful if you're advertising about that fast charging feature in that phone on that front this is a worthy charging brick now let's get into the vibration problem this phone when i bought it the, uh, with the initial operating system version this used to vibrate even for simple notification for each and every notification if you're holding like this you could feel that vibration here which was extremely terrible now they have somewhat sorted out the issue with an operating system update i think in the miui 12.5 that problem uh, after i updated that problem is somewhat reduced but so does the loudness of the speakers so you lose the loudness thereby reducing the vibration but still you'll feel the vibration if you're watching a video in youtube playing some music you could feel that but the notifications you don't have to deal with them like you did earlier which is a relief but still that is a problem for this phone this is running in miui 12 but it loses the miui phone messaging app instead this is having the stock phone and messaging app from android itself and because of that this doesn't have the call recording option but in a later update me ui has brought that back but that also seems a lot buggy i'm not able to record my calls it doesn't have any auto recording feature plus if you record it manually it gets stopped automatically I've, i'll have to look into that why that's happening now the camera looks pretty good for the specs it have it is a quad camera setup anyway the two megapixel cameras below for the depth and macro seems unnecessary but it does a pretty good job with the portraits and stuff maybe i'm thinking of doing a camera review separately stay tuned for that hit subscribe also this phone has a lot of bloat wares like we see in the xiaomi's but most of them can be removed even a few google apps you can remove which is a good thing also you have ads and recommendations all over the place so i'm thinking of doing an uncluttering of this phone of poco x3 just like the one i did for poco m2 pro i'll link it here so if you're up for the poco x3 uncluttering let me know in the comments also it has a hybrid slot like two sims either two sims or one sim and one sd card yep so that's almost all about the first impressions of this phone rather a pretty good phone in this range with the price bracket and the specs you can't get anything better than this i suppose it's having this vibrating problem which is the huge minus in this phone in my opinion yeah and that's all about it see you in another one have a good day bye bye